Hello everyone, I am Brian, and a lot of you know that I love the program Affinity Designer. Well, today I'm going to be going over another program, Affinity Photo. A lot of people go to Photoshop, and I think Affinity Photo is actually a lot easier to use, and you can accomplish a lot of the things you can do with Photoshop. So I'm going to just walk you through Affinity Photo and show you what you can do. I have different examples down here in the layers. This first one I'm going to show you um, how to do in painting. And I have each of these examples in different groups. So if I expand this first group, see I have two different layers, text and image layer. This isn't a bird layer on top of a sky layer, it's just one image. But let's say I want to remove the bird. Now uh, you probably know you could use um, one of the selection tools and get rid of the bird that way and then fix up the background, the gap you create in the background. But we're not going to be doing that. We're going to use a, um, a feature called in painting. So I'll grab my in painting brush. And now first you'll see that I cannot edit the bird because this is an image layer. So I'm going to right click this and click rasterize. Now it is a pixel layer. Raster is the same as pixel. You have to work with pixels in order to edit. So with this in painting, I'm going to just brush around the bird. And the way this works, um, the program will detect everything around the painted region and it will determine an in-between. So if I release, see it filled the background for me and you'll see that it's not perfect. There are still some clouds here. Oh, I actually created a cloud. I'll remove that. And maybe I want to remove this cloud. I'll remove this. So that's what in painting is. It calculates the in between of the painted object. So let's go to the second example. This is a little trickier because I have a sun in the background of the bird that I want to remove. So the in between will not work the same. So again, right click the image layer and then click rasterize. So see what happens when I do try painting over this bird. See, it looks different. And this doesn't match up. I could fix this a little by fixing the sun, but you'll see it won't be perfect. So you want to make sure that whatever you use, the the background needs to blend, so yeah, I don't think I can really fix this up too much, but you get the point. I could remove the sun altogether. So yeah, in painting is a really neat feature when you ha want to just do things manual when you don't want to do things manually now here is a black and white photo that I want to convert to color <laughs> convert to color so expand the layer and now under this image layer I'm gonna just take a selection brush tool and I'm gonna color each of these objects individually so I'll start with these rocks so just select those rocks and now down here we have masks, adjustments, effects, and live filters. For this I'm going to use an adjustment. We'll use the recolor adjustment and see how they automatically change color. I'll bring the exaggeration down and maybe change the rocks to a more of a bluish color. So we'll stop that. And you'll see right here that I have an adjustment 
um, layer right nested right under this layer. If I don't want that, then I just click the mask, not the layer itself, just, I'm sorry, the adjustment layer itself, and then delete it. And then without the layer deleting, just that adjustment gets deleted. So I'll now I'll deselect that, and I'll select the water now. And this is just a rough example. I'm not going to get too detailed with this. I just want to show what you can do with Affinity Photo. Now create an, another adjustment under this same layer. Uh, adjustments. Recolor. And see, that's how you do it. You just add selections and then recolor. And you can keep recoloring over and over. Now for this, I'm going to create a masking effect. Now you could just, um, just delete part of the figure that you don't want there. But that's not a way you should do it because if you want to pull them out a little, you lose that um, area you deleted. So I'm going to undo that. And now with that layer selected, I'm going to click mask. And with mask, the brushes, um, white and black, is the same as revealing and erasing so the white will reveal and the black will erase so if I erase that then I'll just switch to the white and I'll reveal it again and don't forget this is just a mask so I'm not actually affecting the layer itself click the mask it goes back to normal so I'll bring the mask back up and I'll take black and I'll just do that now, if I want to pull them out a little, I'll just take the white. I'm sorry, the yeah, I need to have the white select. Oops, I didn't have the mask selected. I just had the layer selected. Okay, so now I can do that. If you want to be more precise, you can just use um, the selection, what is it, uh, the marquee selection tool. But I just want to show you that you can use white and black to erase and reveal. Here is another masking example. Now this, we need to be more particulate. We, I want this stick to go through the ring. So I'll go over this part of the ring, but under this part of the ring. So for this, um, there's a sh shortcut you can use. If you hold command and press the thumbnail, then you can create a selection over that entire layer. So I'm going to hide that um, layer, and with that selection still there, I'm going to click the stick icon and we'll create a mask first. Oops, hold on. I need to create the mask first. Okay, so create the mask first. Now hold command and click the ring icon. Now I'll click the mask of the stick layer. Hide this so you know that I'm working on this stick layer right now. Press delete. Now when I hide, uh, now when I bring up the ring icon see hold on. see that it's just the stick that was erased not the ring itself so now I'm gonna click on that stick icon and with the white brush I'm gonna bring it back just that part not this part just that part 
and now you see we accomplished that. Right, I'm going to end this right here and I'm going to go through the rest of the examples in another video tutorial because this, I already covered 10 minutes. So I'll see you later.